Hello everyone, uh, Richard here. I uh, wanted to talk about how to play ultimate mode, how to get good. Um, I think we need to have an update on our understanding of, of this mode. Um, it's clear seeing uh, some, some results from Bricotta's statistics and just watching him play that there is a lot more going on with ultimate mode than I'm used to and my whole thinking about it has changed a lot. And so this is like a guide for people who really want to prove they're good at the game and they want to challenge themselves and you want to jump into ultimate mode. This I'm going to go over some uh, ideas on some stuff that I think is extremely important if you're going to go into ultimate mode. So tactical concepts. Um, I've noticed that Bricotta is consistently doing um, heavy... He's doing surrenders on heavy weapon infantry. Uh... I don't think I'm doing that enough, and I don't know if Goose is doing that enough, but it clearly is making uh, these extremely complex maps go better. So you should definitely practice early and often getting heavy weapon infantry surrenders, if you can. I don't think it's always possible, but there's plenty of maps where you can practice this. Second, I think you should uh, get level bombers and use that to drain ammo from tanks or to set up surrenders. Either one is extremely valuable. Um, these heavy tanks in ultimate mode are no longer a joke, and they're, it's almost it's almost unfair how nasty these tanks are. So you need to start thinking about other ways to deal with them, and this is something I don't see Bricotta do enough, but I think he's going to get there. Uh, level bombers should be uh, a key part of how to help deal with uh, heavy tanks. So he uses tactical bombers, which are important as well, but you should mix this in with level bombers because you only have so many slots and only so many tactical bombers. Uh, and sometimes doing damage isn't exactly what you want. You want to drain ammo. So uh, you should get used to using them. And I think there's a lot of players that don't use uh, level bombers enough. Another point, hills are not safe for infantry, even with artillery protection. So there must be something going on with the stats on the hills. Maybe there's an initiative cap, or def or there isn't really a defense bonus for infantry and hills. I don't really know. All I know is, in ultimate mode, hills are not safe. So you're going to have to change your planning around hills, because these tanks will attack your infantry in hills. Next, uh, use anti-tank and tanks and trenches more often. I have noticed, and I don't know if this transition has hit Bricotta or Goose yet, but trenches are saving my ass in many cases. It seems like that there's like an initiative cap. There's probably some sort of defensive bonus if you're in the trench. And I noticed that my tanks are surviving better and they're dishing out damage more. And I have a feeling when things start to get nasty, we're going to really want trenches. So have your eye on trenches. Try to find a way to use them more often. The most important tactical concept is being more aggressive pays off. Uh, I think Bricotta has proven conclusively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you be more aggressive, you get more surrenders, you get more hexes, and this in turn means more prestige. And... He doesn't talk about this too much, but I have definitely noticed he's getting more kills and more XP on units and more heroes. And obviously, all of those things together means your core is a lot stronger. Uh, some of these traditional... Like, if you watch uh, Night Phoenix's playthrough right now, it's really solid. It's like a, a really solid, high-level approach to how to play Panzer Corps Grand Campaign, but... You could get away with that on Rommel. Um, ultimate mode isn't rewarding passivity. Uh, you know, when I played it the first time, it was super passive and it wasn't going well. And then the second time, I was a lot more aggressive. But then I backed off the aggression because I wasn't sure I could handle the Russian units. But Bricotta has shown that uh, if you're using your air force the right way, if you if you ambush the right way, things will go better for you. Uh, strategic concepts. I think uh, you should consider buying a bridge engineer. I think that there are going to be opportunities to use them to accelerate a crossing. Even like even at the Hague, perhaps you can get more aggressive with a bridge engineer. Definitely at Viasma, um, if you were determined 
to try something at Modlin, I think a bridge engineer could be helpful. But you should just have one sitting in your core because there might be some maps where you really want to get a marginal victory or decisive victory, and there's rivers in the way, and not having a bridge engineer is a problem. And I think people undervalue how useful they can be. I have a really brilliant Viasma map where I use a bridge engineer f to do some pretty amazing things that no one has ever considered before. Um, who knows what other options are out there with a bridge engineer. So uh, here's something I, I think Bricada has really highlighted and I am sold on it after seeing it for the 60th time. I'm a slow learner sometimes. But um, at a certain point, I just have to kind of bow down to a superior strategy. This idea of hitting tanks and letting them repair so they lose XP, this idea is so incredibly strong, I am a little at a loss that I haven't seen anyone else emphasize it. So a lot of times we emphasize damaging a unit to set up, you know, outright killing it or to surrender it, uh, just to damage it so it doesn't move. Uh, Bukata's next level, uh, I, you just watch his playthroughs, he, he's saying, ah, I don't really care that they're repairing, what I care is about is the XP. And it's undeniable that the less experience these units have, the easier it is for you to deal with them. Uh, I think this, this particular point, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with this in 42, I think it's going to be a huge concept. Uh, when you start hitting three-star units and, and he just bombs them so that they repair and they go to a two-star. Or he's fighting two-star units and he bombs and they repair and they go to one-star. I have a feeling this is going to be key to getting through 42 and possibly 43. Uh, this might be the most important strategic concept. Well, the second most important uh, strategic concept in the whole war and it it's just like it's just amazing to watch. I, I miss these opportunities. I have two I have two traditional of a thought process on on how to attack tanks. I, I think both Soren and Robbie play strategy games and everybody else uh, uh, would benefit a lot to thinking about how to use this against the AI. It's not such a big deal in Rommel, but maybe on Manstein it would be or on Field Marshal it would be. This hasn't really been fully explored, but I, I, I kind of wonder just how abusive this could could become. So the next thing I already mentioned, hills are not safe. I forgot to delete that. Okay, hills are not safe. Uh, diversify your artillery. Bricada has a great statistical overview of the war years, and he has shown overwhelming evidence that uh, diversified artillery is making the core stronger. Don't get just 17 centimeter. Don't get just 10.5, don't just get stugs, diversify. Probably a heavy emphasis on the 10.5, but you're going to be adding a couple stugs, add a naval waffer, add uh, two 17 centimeters at least, maybe three, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the 15 centimeter, I think everyone is agreeing uh, the rate of fire is a problem, so it's not that effective. Um, I, the the Warframen could probably be very useful, uh, but it's very expensive, and the low ammo count can be a problem, especially with Gadarian. You don't have a lot of time. You need to kind of hit and run, and that low ammo count is is a major restriction. But there's still plenty of room for other types of artillery. Uh, some of the stuff with the Stugs. Uh, one thing Bricada, I think, is working on is aggressively using Stugs to attack. I'm starting to see the transition in this play. This was actually first highlighted by um, Deductor. And I have always played aggressive with my Stugs, and I certainly highlight that in my playthroughs. Uh, I think other people are a little slow about it, about really using uh, Stugs in an aggressive manner. I think it's most beneficial in Ultimate Mode. You are re I'll get into this, but you are rewarded with more aggression. So... Um, Oh, and here's another strategic concept. Learn complex strategic withdrawals. I know uh, Bricada just posted a video of Vitebisk where he is just doing this stuff really high level. But honestly, just look at his earlier videos. He's doing this all of the time, even on maps where he's aggressive. 
He takes territory and then pulls out. This is not a new idea, but I don't think I've ever seen someone make it a macro concept. <laughs> the Doctor has done it on some of his maps where he fucks up the deployment. He, he ends up doing these really complex strategic withdrawals. He's almost like a genius at fixing clusterfucks. But Bricadas are different. Bricadas are planned, uh, well-thought-out strategic withdrawals, and it's almost at a macro level. He, he, he somehow has his core in the right place at the right time, and he has planned out several moves ahead that I'm going to seize this, and then I'm going to pull to these defensive lines. He'll, he'll, uh, I think we're going to start seeing him use trenches more, but I, I can imagine him pulling back into trenches. Um, he's really good at spotting how to use the terrain to do a correct strategic withdrawal. This is something I understand conceptually, but I fail to execute uh, uh, in practice because it's actually, this is a pretty high level idea, even if it's simple to understand. To actually execute it correctly is experience and intuition that uh, I think other players, I would be very curious what other elite players, how they would handle this kind of pressure. Ultimate mode is unforgiving. There's easy ways in Rommel to do um, withdrawals and not suffer too much. Ultimate mode, it's not easy. I have found, I like doing strategic withdrawals, but I am struggling with it in ultimate mode because the pressure is really serious. Bricada is also making mistakes, uh, probably coming from being tired, but his early complex strategic withdrawals are really good. His middle game is pretty good. It's just that the end game, he can sometimes make mistakes. But the concept is there. There's there's a, there's a way to do this. He's proving it over and over and over again that you can do these weird withdrawals and and really make the terrain work against the enemy. Uh, he's often using it with major victory hexes. I think everybody knows about that. I don't know if they're doing it at a macro level, <laughs> where the whole map is. It's you're making the whole map work against the enemy. And I mentioned here, I think this doing this properly in ultimate mode would be extremely hard for experienced players. Bricada has seized the mantle and he has figured it out. I think it's going to get harder for him later, but he's figured out that this is super important for surviving ultimate mode. I don't know how other experienced players, how quickly they would pick up on it. Uh, I am struggling a lot with it, so... Um, I, I don't know what other players will find if they try to implement this. More ideas. Uh, Bricados begin to show evidence that having heavy hitters in the anti-tank and anti-aircraft department makes a difference. Um, it's starting to happen. You can start to see air, anti-aircraft is becoming more important and anti-tank. Um, I think a lot of people don't like anti-tank units, but I think in ultimate mode you need to invest in it. Probably, I, I strongly suspect you should get a couple of packs, and um, you can get those guys up to two stars without too much trouble. But you need to get you need to get them early, and you need to use them early. I am very aggressive with my AA development. I think it's paying off. I've got heroes on some of these units; they're getting a lot of experience, and airplanes are afraid to attack them because I'm putting overstrength on them. I think the earlier you do that, the better. Because the Air Force is starting to get nasty in 42, and it will get really bad in 43. And if you don't have enough anti-aircraft units, you're going to have problems. Next, um, this is something I wanted to talk about for a while, and, and Bricada is really starting to get heavy-handed with it, which he should. But, um, really, I think there there is too much focus on the soft cap. I didn't mention this here. There is a serious misconception about the soft cap. So the reason everyone gets SE tanks is because uh, you want to protect yourself against soft tanks. You need heavy hitting tanks. You need a lot of heavy hitting tanks. But I think Ricotta is showing that tanks are a little overrated. Um, really where tank shine is in a diverse small arms combat system. And what's being discounted when you make all of your tanks be SE units is that they're actually expensive to repair. 
and that's draining your prestige in another way. So I, I think it's better to have two SE infantry. And he is showing statistically that the SE infantry are beasts. And I can tell you, having experimented with SE infantry, that um, they are very deadly. They're not quite as deadly as Oladir, but they're not far behind. And if you have Oladir and two SE infantry in your core, which you can get very early in the game, you have really strong infantry division. Like, through 39 and 40, like, if you've got three major heavy-hitting units, uh, your infantry units are fearsome, and the AI will be afraid of them. And you're also, by doing this, you're setting up a situation where you can get other types of infantry. And Bricada is showing that other types of infantry are quite valuable. So try out Cavalry, Crotchetson, uh, get another Pioneer, get a Bridge Engineer, get Paratroopers. You can squeeze value out of them. And he and actually, especially in the early war, all of these units can be proven to have value. Um, so I think a major intellectual shift that an elite player would have to make is that think of your non-hero infantry as utility units. Um, so a lot of these guys will take damage more easily than your hero units, but that doesn't mean they're useless. They're actually pretty good at mopping up. I mean, Bricotta shows this over and over again. And you can also, if you get a badly damaged unit, you can send it back to guard a hex. Um, there's just a lot of things that you can do with them. And the other thing to realize is a lot of these units are cheap. So you should consider like it, it an investment you're getting them to absorb some blows and then you can elite replacement those missing units and it's not as expensive as having a tank take damage or an anti-tank um i think he also has shown conclusively mountain units are better than regulars probably everybody knew that but it, it's starting to become clear that you should use mountain units however they need transports because once you get to the bigger maps Three movement is just not enough to kind of hyper-accelerate pocket collapsing. Um, so I strongly suggest mountain units with trucks. You don't need too many because you're going to have a lot of utility infantry units, but you're going to want a couple at least. Um, and I mentioned damage on hero. Other thoughts. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so not everyone is capable of just figuring out a map right away. Uh so the next best idea is the goose method. So the goose method is you save every turn and then something bad is going to happen, guaranteed, <laughs> pretty much. The, the second you start trying to play ultimate mode, uh, let's say you're coming from Rommel or Field Marshal, uh, save every turn because you are going to get your nuts crushed. And what's going to happen is you're going to realize you screwed up your deployment, you screwed up a, a, a placement, you didn't cover your flank. There's a lot of things that you didn't think about that suddenly are starting to become really important in ultimate mode. So retry it again and kind of get through the groove of it. I, I think that uh, um, being able to play like Bricotta is... I, I'm going to go with borderline impossible. I, his, his intuition... Uh, it's pretty amazing to me. He can figure out maps after just a couple of attempts. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know how in the hell he does this, but he I, I kind of have a suspicion about it relating to uh, the next point. But uh, I think even a really good player isn't going to be able to jump into ultimate mode and have it be smooth sailing. <laughs> I mean, I think even at the beginning, Bricotta had serious issues. There was a lot of wild shenanigans he had to come up with to get through it the next big thing this is the most important thing if you're going to play ultimate mode it's small arms tactics uh he i mean i can't prove this statistically you just have to watch him play but he's got infantry artillery anti-tank anti-aircraft tanks uh scouts he's he's just really piling on with the scouts um he has pretty consistently been using small arms tactics. There's been a couple of exceptions. I think he's had some pretty heavy artillery deployments from time to time. But I would say most of the time, he's got a reasonably diverse force. He doesn't overwhelm with the air, but he definitely has strong air units. 
and he's coordinating. Uh, his coordination is astonishing. This is really, really high level stuff. Um, it might take me several hours to explain some of the wild stuff Bricada was doing at Vitebisk. Uh, it makes sense after seeing it, but it would be really difficult for me as a player to have that much vision. And and this is pretty amazing because I actually can calculate many, many moves I had. Like, I can play entire chess games in my head. You know, that's not a problem. I can analyze extremely complex end games to their conclusion in my head. Uh, but Panzer Corps is like... I can see, like, if there's a nice tactical combination, I can see how to do the moves and execute it. Um, but what I'm seeing from Bricada is, like, really deep strategic moves. It, it's all disguised as tactics, but the reality is he planned uh, how to move his units for the next two or three turns. Um, not even necessarily knowing where the enemy is. He just kind of anticipated where the enemy would be. And uh, he, he manages to get the surrenders in a safe way. This is something I've been struggling with because I am not seeing far enough ahead. So my only advice here is uh, you should study Bricotta's vid uh, videos. And honestly, you might need to sit down with a notebook. And every time he does something cool, you need to write down what was he doing before he did the cool thing. Whether it's uh, putting uh, something in vision range that pulls units forward or parking a, a, an airplane over a unit to set up a surrender next turn or just doing a, a complex strategic withdrawal. Um, whatever it is, you should probably just write it down and then try to memorize it. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I could claim I have like a bunch of, of brilliant small arm tactics demonstration, but I, I don't think so. I think... Uh, uh, he, he's, he's really, really showing it at a high level. Um, I have tried many different approaches in ultimate mode and have failed. I think Goose has to acknowledge that many of his, if you look at his earlier attempts in ultimate mode, um, he was really struggling. I think he's getting into a groove now and... I have noticed that there is a convergence, not only in core composition, but I'm seeing it somewhat of a convergence in tactics. Um, and I would emphasize, if you're not using small arms, you're going to get punished. You can trust me on this. I have tried all kinds of sneaky things to make ultimate mode work, and I have failed. Just, just flat out failed. Um, and 42 is unforgiving. And... Uh, one of the things I, I uh, am struggling with is I don't know how to do direct fights at a high level, and you absolutely have to know how to do that. Uh, I'm thinking there's only really like two players, maybe Goose, uh, but, but he's never played Ultimate Mode before, but, but maybe like Soren is the only other player I could think of that knows how to handle these in-your-face fights. Um, so it's almost like you need to practice a lot. You need to do like really complex, heavy armored division fights to know how to do the end your phase combat. Um, this is a, essential for playing ultimate mode at a high level. Um, and I'll mention that purposely failing scenarios is, it's just a total failure. Uh, if you're playing ultimate mode, it only takes you so far. And we lose XP, surrender. It's just incredible. All of these little things pile up, and your core is going to be weaker for later fights. So if you're going to try ultimate mode, you really should approach it with Ricotta's perspective. I'm going to try for a decisive victory. And if I can't get it, I'll settle for the marginal. It's uh, That is going to be very, very difficult for 99.99% of the Panzer Core player base. We're kind of if you're playing at a higher level either you learn a lot of patience and caution and you really have to dispose of uh, of that thought process because you're you're there's no room for passivity uh in ultimate mode uh so i think that core composition and ideal one will look something like this <clears throat> i don't know uh i think three paratroopers is the right number for the early war however I think by 42, you're better off 
converting them to <clears throat> regular infantry with trucks. I put a question mark there because I don't know, and I'm really curious what Bricada thinks about this. You know, do you get do you make them grenadiers with trucks? Do you make them mountain units with trucks? Um, I think I said earlier mountain units are proving to be superior, so maybe these paratroopers should become mountain units. Um, but you notice I'm adding a bunch of utility-based uh, infantry divisions here. Uh, and two SE Grenadiers, so I think that's something you should definitely do. And notice that a lot of the hero units are mountain units, which is really good for you. Um, I, I'm also used to upgrading Wernsberger to not have the half-track, but I think Ricotta is showing that the time constraint is so serious, you need the half-track to force surrenders at an accelerated rate. So if you get something with a half-track, you ultimately should keep it. Uh... Tanks. I think tanks are fewer than people would expect. Um, you really only need um, a flam tank. Like, so you you're given two Panzer ones. One of those could just be upgraded to a flam tank. And um, some people might disagree with this and say, "Well, what about the other Panzer one?" I don't really know what you should do with the other Panzer one because I think that it's too many tanks. I think that, um, you know, if you think about it, by the time you get to um, Kiev or Leningrad, you're going to have a Flam Tank, Kesha, Rondorf, and two SE tanks. And in my opinion, so that's five tanks. I think that's enough. In my opinion, that, that's enough tanks in 41. And uh, you should have two to three anti-tanks that you're deploying every scenario by Russia. So you're probably going to have a pack. You're probably going to have a Panzerjäger, maybe a, a, a second pack. And those units can be used to guard bridges and slowly encroach upon the enemy and set up surrenders. Um, you can think of your anti-tanks as units that guard your flanks. And it really helps the tanks control the, the middle of the board. That's one way I think of it. Uh, probably some people would disagree and say, I've got too, too few tanks, but I'm not so sure. Artillery, I think about 11 is right. Is, do I have that right? Number six, seven, yeah, 11. Uh, we're seeing quite a bit of statistical evidence that the 10 centimeter with two points of overstrength is a beast. We're also seeing evidence that some 17 centimeters are valuable, even now, uh, I, th I think the efficiency effectiveness measure of them it's a little bit lower but i'm wondering if that will still be true by the end of 42 and uh the neville warfare is okay i think there's definitely a use for it you got a lot of infantry you got to deal with the neville warfare is perfect storm panzers and stugs are great for mobility uh i think you're seeing some evidence that you should get storm panzers early Use them, get them XP, and then you can uh, get your Stugs, get them XP. More mobility is a good thing. Uh, and you need it so you can fight that Gadarian setting. Uh, two Scouts, um, I don't see any evidence that you need more, but definitely evidence that you want all-terrain Scouts. Uh, highly effective units. And he's showing this statistically, which is nice. Uh, I think there should be four AA and four anti-tank. Uh, there's definitely some wiggle room here. I don't know if there's more room for more anti-tank in AA. I think that's a lot of AA, but I'm you have to think about it as I want to be able to you want to be able to cover your units as they're advancing. And I can already tell you I know where Prakata is going to go with his playthrough. I can see it. I know his personality type in this game. He's going to get into 1943, and he is going to be rolling over the enemy. He's going to be super aggressive. I think he's going to want some mobile AA. There is some given to you in 43, but you're probably going to want a couple more because the planes are pretty merciless in 43. And as far as anti-tank, I think that all of them are going to become mobile. I noticed that Ricotta upgraded his pack to a Stug. Probably a good idea. He's going to be super aggressive. The opportunities for defensiveness are rather limited. You're going to have to cover your flanks and weaknesses and your gaps. Get four mobile anti-tanks. I think these units are going to be extremely dangerous. Um, 
1942 and 1943, especially with experience. Um, there, the, you need these units to work with other units to cover your holes. Um, and I think this is probably enough for the whole grand campaign because you're going to find you're going to need a lot of artillery in this mode and a lot of infantry. So your in your tanks are going to be important, but don't let them dominate. I I, I think I, I have a feeling maybe I will be proven wrong, but the tanks are going to definitely increase in value in forty two and forty three, but the effectiveness of them because of how expensive they are might drag that down. So you're going to be breaking soft cap. Well, I don't know if you have fewer tanks. I don't know if you'll break soft cap, but um, I think there's a prestige investment associated with those tanks that's pretty steep. And unless you're an elite player like Soren, who really knows how to safely use his tanks, um, you're going to take damage. Bricotta is guaranteed to take damage on his tanks in 43. As clever as he is, he will take damage. If he kind of doesn't put too much prestige in his tanks... And that would be determined by overstrength and by how many he deploys. Um, he might save prestige, more prestige in the long run than whatever is happening with the soft cap. But because of the diverse nature of your core, the soft cap may not even be an issue. I'm not sure yet. He, I, I don't even know if he's sure about that. And the Luftwaffe, you know, you're going to have eight fighters. You're going to buy a fighter. You're going to get all these hero fighters. That's fine. Three tactical bombers. The one that you're given, Rudel and Lent, is all you need. I, th I think that um, it's really dangerous to have too many because your fighters are going to be all over the map. And I think two strategic bombers is the right number. I think there's a va value in both a Heinkel and a Donier. Um, Heinkel is better for suppression, and a Donier is good for ammo draining. Um, I think a really high-level player would find a way to use both of those. And so that's what I think the core should look like. Please comment on this and let me know. Uh, if there is a strategic idea I forgot or if there's something else about Ultimate Mode that I should mention, remind me. I think the two most important is small arms tactics. And I mean serious small arm tactics. None of this janky stuff that we're sometimes doing. I mean, like, you are really coordinating with your units and the Air Force almost perfectly. Uh, and the other thing was be aggressive. Be very aggressive. And the third unusual thing is you should focus on getting SE infantry early and make them strong. I think it will make the campaign play easier later.